remember a time in your life when you were changed by a thought, kind of serendipity, maybe, maybe we'd call it a game changer. I was at a seminar for uh, church leaders some years ago, and this pastor was sharing what he had found in Acts chapter 6. He noticed the importance of prayer. You remember how the Jerusalem church had a problem? The Grecian widows were not getting in on the distribution of food each day. The Aramaic speaking, the Jews were doing much better, but uh, these ladies were getting uh, the short end of the deal. The disciples saw the problem and they got together and thought about it. And they said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Of course, there's nothing wrong with waiting on tables, but this was before the New Testament was written. So they were the only source of God's truth. They were the ones who had been with Jesus, heard all that he taught, heard those private conversations, saw his miracles, saw his resurrection. So they had to stand there in that gap and, and get the word out. That was their job. So they told the church to choose seven qualified men who were able to take the responsibility of getting the food to all of the widows. And then they summarized it in chapter 6 and verse 4 of Acts. And we will give our attention to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Well, of course, pastors have the ministry of the word. We train for years. We spend hours each week preparing messages for teaching and preaching. But this reference to prayer ministry made it equal to the ministry of the word. Now, I was sitting there in that seminar thinking, I'm a person of prayer, but not that much prayer. At that insight, the Holy Spirit seemed to tell me that I needed to make some changes. And I made the commitment to pray for everyone in the church every week. I prayed for men, women, children. I prayed for babies in the womb. I gathered the information I knew about each person in the church, and I lifted that up to God on a weekly basis. If I didn't know of any specific needs, if there weren't you know, big troubles that they had given prayer requests over, I prayed for their marriage, their job, their family, their health, their growth in Christ. And I did this for years for every person in our church. Now, only God knows if that made any difference in their lives, but it made a lot of difference in my life. It was very, very helpful. It was a growing time for me. In these days of turmoil and fear, I'm guessing you're spending more time in prayer. I know I am. I made a list of passages that speak of continually being prayerful and continually being close to God. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, you remember, says, Pray and ask God for everything you need, always giving thanks. Pray for everything you need. Yes, lift it all up to God. I love the 2 Corinthians 10, 5 words. It says in this version, we capture every thought and make it give up and obey Christ. We are in charge of our thought life. We uh, have the privilege and the responsibility to control what we think about. When sinful thoughts, when negative thoughts come in, we have to choose to wrestle those thoughts into submission and make them serve Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, little statement that I'm still trying to figure out. It says, pray without ceasing. In Romans 12, verse 12, it's a very similar comment. It says, be constant in prayer. In Colossians 4.2, it says, let heaven fill your thoughts. It makes all the difference in the lives of God's people when we pray. I encourage you to lift up everything in your life to God. Walk in close relationship with him each day. Let your mind dwell on him. Even as you're breathing, let your thoughts surround him. One more verse. Luke chapter 18, verse 7. This is the area which talks about the unjust judge. And uh, you remember the lady was coming to this judge to get some justice for her situation. 
and she kept coming back every day and bothering him till he finally answered her prayer, uh, her request. And it says in Luke 18, 7, as a summary, God will always give what is right to his people who cry out to him night and day, and he will not be slow to answer them. That's so directing and encouraging. It's a prayer promise. Let me read it again. Luke 18, 7. God will always give what is right to his people who cry out to him night and day, and he will not be slow to answer them. Now, when we think about that verse, uh, what is slow? <laughs> he will not be slow to answer him. I like Max Lucado's little statement about this verse. He says, why does God wait until all the money is gone? Why does he wait until the sickness has lingered? Why does he choose to wait often until the other side of the grave to answer prayer for healing. Uh, like I've told many people in my years of ministry, uh, when they ask these huge why questions, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why God works in your life the way he is. But I do know his timing is always right. And he will only do what is best for the situation. I've told many people that in my time of ministry. Though you hear nothing, God is speaking. Though you see nothing, he is acting. With God, there are no accidents. Every incident is intended to bring us closer to him. I hope on this Wednesday you feel comfortable taking absolutely everything to God in prayer. It's not just to get answers for your life. Prayer is designed to bring us close to our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you. Our God, we, we seek you minute by minute. We want to walk that close with you. And we want to lift everything in our life into you in prayer. And I know there's people that are worried. There are people that are afraid. There are problems, probably economically, somebody lost their job and they haven't been able to get their their remuneration from the <laughs> remuneration from the uh, government and uh, so they're economically challenged and we think of those that are sick we think of pastor bill and his challenge with pain and he and carol are fighting that together there's many things that come to our life and right now we probably all have prayer requests you know our hearts, Father. You know what we need, and we pray that you will take that and change it in our life. Give us strength. Give us direction. Give us your closeness. Thank you for your love and grace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.